So what did you just see? You just saw a whole new kind of musical instrument. A musical instrument that takes me, the performer's emotion, and converts it to sound. What you saw is me starting from a relaxed state, as relaxed as I could be at the beginning of a performance, the first time, going to a state of tension and anger, and then finally relaxing, taking a deep breath, and ending the piece, or ending the beginning of the piece. I'm a luthier. I design musical instruments. But I design musical instruments using a soldering iron, circuits, computers, all the technology that you can imagine in order to create something new and different to create sound. Don't laugh. That's me 20 years ago. For 20 years now, I've been working on trying to reveal the invisible, that that was inside you to create music, muscle tension, thoughts. And in the past five years, I've been really focusing my fascination on emotion itself. Is there a way that I can take my emotion, what I'm feeling right now, and in a moment I'll talk to you about what you're feeling right now, and using both of those to create music? But before I do that, I just want to walk you through something you already know. I want to walk you through how music is created. If you're a performer, or even if you're not, you have an emotion and a thought, you have a physical gesture, you hit the key on a piano keyboard, you take a bow and you strike it across the violin, and that creates a sound. Then what happens? Well, you perceive that sound, and you go on to the next note. You have an emotion or thought, and you move on to the next note. And this is what you're used to when you're playing music. But I have a question. What if, what if we could do that? We could go straight from emotion and thought to creating sound, bypassing the need to hit that key on the keyboard. And before I go any further, I promised I wanted to talk to you about you, the audience. What's happening with you right now? Well, you're perceiving what I'm talking about. I'm performing and you're perceiving that. And then you're having an emotion and a thought. And if I'm very lucky, you might be smiling. You might be paying attention. You might even be clapping. And how do I know that? I perceive that as well. This is the normal process. But again, I'll throw a wrench out there. What if I could do this? What if I could take your emotion and thought right now and sonify it, create music from it. Well, that's what I've been spending the past five years doing, trying to figure out how to do exactly that. How do I do that? How do I measure your emotion? Well, I can measure it right now by looking at you, can I see your smile, see your facial expression, but that's not gonna work because I can't feed that into a computer somewhere. So I need to use what are called physiological indicators of emotion. And as the cliche goes, there's good news, there's bad news, and then there's some good news. So let's start with the good news, the things you already know. You already know that there is a relationship between human physiology and emotion. How do you know that? Well, when you get excited, your heart starts pounding, your skin starts sweating, all sorts of things physiologically start to happen in your body, your breath starts to shallow, or the other way around, when you're relaxed, you take a deep breath, your breathing slows, your heart rate slows, your skin sweat slows, slowly goes away. So you know that. So this is good news. We know that we can measure physiology and have this relationship. Ah, but you're waiting for, how do I measure that on stage? If I'm going to measure this physiology, how am I going to do it? Probably most of you in here, the only time you've seen physiology measured is when you've watched some sort of program like ER or gone to the hospital. Well, you don't want me on stage with this huge thing I'm rolling along, you know, with giant monitors. That's just not going to work for on-stage performance. So what we had to do is we had to design a set of bands that performers could wear. And these bands fit on your body and they measure heart and breath rate, skin sweat, brain activity, muscle tension, arm tension, and they can be worn on stage. You can walk around with them. They're of course wireless. So now I can actually perform while being measured and while my physiology is giving indicators of emotion. But the real question then is how do I measure you guys? Well, how I measure you guys is by designing another circuit. I designed a circuit that fits on your fingertip that measures your pulse. And some of you have worn similar kinds of devices before where it's measured your pulse, 
probably didn't measure your skin sweat, but we can measure that as well. We can measure your temperature. And we can plug that into a mobile phone. So now what you can do is before you come to an event like this or a concert, you can download an app before you come in. Come in here, plug this into your phone. Now all of your data is being streamed to some, I'm pointing at some magical central server somewhere. All that data is being sent there, and we can use that to control music as well. So that's how we do it. But what's the bad? Well, the bad has two components to it. The first is that if any of you are thinking really closely, you're thinking, well, wait a sec. When I go running, my skin starts to sweat. My heart starts to pound. I'm lifting weights, and my heart's pounding like crazy. I'm not having a, an emotion. I'm just sweating. Well, that's a problem, and we'll have to deal with that. The other problem, or at least a question that you might have, is, is the relationship between your emotion and your physiology the same as yours? The same as yours? Are these all the same? Can we really use that, or are there too many differences, and then we can't use that at all? So those are the two problems, but I promised you that there'd be some good news. Well, the first thing is, the good news is you guys aren't budging. You're sitting there, you're not moving, most audiences are in that position, so any change you have in your physiology right now is probably due to emotion. Now, it could be the emotion of you forgot your car keys in the car right now and you're going, <clears throat> but probably most of your emotional changes are due to me talking right now. So that's actually pretty good. Yes, of course, there's the giant raves where people are jumping around, and we're going to have some problems with that. But standard musical listening, we're OK. Then the other problem that I mentioned is this individual differences. And so what I needed to do is I needed to explore, are there differences? Are there differences amongst all of you in the relationship between your emotional state and your physiology? So being scientists, we had to do a study. We had to go and do what we call emotion motion, but because we're on the boundary between science and art, we could do a study in art museums. So what we did is we set up these, um, these exhibitions where you go in, you sit down, you listen to music, you wear a little sensor on your fingertip, and you answer some questions about how you felt when you listened to the song. We've had over 6,000 people participate in this study. We've had over 18,000 songs listened to from a pool of 67 songs from Western classical music to hip-hop to uh, raga music to you can't imagine all the different kinds we have in there. And we've done it all over the world. Matter of fact, in what, about 12 hours from now, I'm flying out with my graduate student to go to Manila to install this in another location. So when the people listened to this, they did two things, as I mentioned. They reported their own emotional reaction, and then we recorded their physiology. So let's first go into their emotional reaction. This plot here is known as a Russell circumplex. The horizontal line there is far left is negative emotion, far right is positive emotion. So it says minimum valence to maximum valence. The vertical axis is how excited you are, from minimum arousal to maximum arousal. So I'd like to talk about a few songs, and of course I know what everybody here wants me to talk about, Slayer Raining Blood. Um, <laughs> so, Let's talk about it for a moment. Let's look at it. Well, hmm, that's on minimum valence. That means it's a very negative song, and it has pretty high activation. What emotion is that? Anger. Slayer, raining blood. It's anger. OK, let's go to the other side of the world here. Beach Boys, good vibrations. It's a happy song, right? But still a lot of activation, but it's in the positive side of things. And I really want to point out that this study has been done all over the world many places where they don't actually understand the words that are being sung. This is about the music and how it's making them feel and the universality of that. I'll pick one more example, Bing Crosby, White Christmas. I'm dreaming of a white. It's very calm, it's slightly positive, it's what we would call serene. And it shows up exactly there on there. So what we're seeing from this plot is there's a universality of how people respond to music or self-report that they respond to music. Let's go down here. Uh-oh, geez. Huge graphs, lots of stuff. I'll take you through it. This is the physiological reaction. The bottom signal there is the audio waveform. The other three signals are the physiological signals I'm going to talk about. The red line is the average over thousands of people. The song in particular is Jeff Buckley's Hallelujah. I don't know how many people know that, but for those of you that do, you know that in about 60 seconds in, there's this wonderful change in, in uh, pitch and key. 
that happens right there. Well, what happens? Well, it becomes very powerful at that moment in the song. Well, if we go right there, we notice that the heart rate averaged over thousands of people, everybody's heart rate starts to go up during that very profound point in the song. Let's look up there. During that exact same moment, everybody's skin starts to sweat a little bit. So there's this incredible universal reaction to this song and this change in key that happens halfway through the song. And so that's very important again because, you know, what was I trying to solve? I was trying to answer the question, are there commonalities between your physiology and emotion so that I can use those as a musical instrument? So I'm going to finish up back where I started with this piece that I did with the composer. A wonderful collaboration between a digital luthier, me, and the composer where we looked at could we create a piece, a first exemplar, if you will, of using this whole new way of creating music, using emotion to create music. So the first one, part of the piece you've already heard. The middle part is this part of the piece that uses audience interaction. So what happens is I stand up and I start walking through the audience. And what can, what can you imagine will happen to the audience when I start walking? They're freaking out, right? I mean, oh my God, this guy has stood up and he's now walking around here. This is freaking me out. So you'll notice that, and how you'll notice that is we mapped each audience member's emotion to an audio loop. And the more excited they got, the faster the loop went around and around and around. So the speakers aren't very good in this room, but hopefully you'll listen closely and you'll hear the changes in pitch that happen as I get up and start walking around the audience. That's me engaging the audience. And the interesting thing that happened there, if you noticed, is that the pitch changed as I went right up to the person and walked away. And we, of course, being academics, we debrief after all the performances, and we asked the audience, well, what do you think happened? And they said, many of them said, oh, you must have a proximity sensor around me, don't you? I said, no, that's your emotion. That's that thing, funny thing you're wearing on your finger. That's measuring your emotional state. That's what happened. The other very, very interesting thing, I think the amazing thing that happened, is we got this. What is this? This is a plot of my skin sweat, I'm in blue, and an audience member's skin sweat. They're in red. Look how they track each other. We discovered that there are empaths. Some of you are empaths. Some of you are feeling everything that I'm going through right now, and you're going on a journey with me. And that's what we saw there. Is, and that's, I mentioned at the beginning, I'm interested in emotion. And I'm also interested in empathy. And here was this first plot that showed me, wow, we can actually measure empathy between performer and audience. So imagine what we can do with this new musical instrument. First of all, virtuosity might not just be how well you can play a physical instrument. It may remove the instrument. How well can you control your emotions to control sound? Secondly, software like Pandora could be controlled using your emotions. You're sad, you get sad music. You're happy, you get happy music, or maybe vice versa. Or maybe you're really annoyed with all the commercials, and that annoyance pops through the commercials and asks you to pay up. <laughs> the final piece that really intrigues me is this blurring the boundary. That's what I really love, and I wish I could walk out through you right now. I love blurring the boundary between you guys creating music and me creating music and working together. And I just think that's terrific. So I'm going to finish up with the last component of stem cells, which was the name of the piece, where I'm going to be, like I am now, all tense and talk, talked through and performed out. And I'm just going to slowly relax and let the piece finish with controlling the sound with my emotional state.
Thank you.